the best all-time NBA player from every physical category. Even though you might not realize it, NBA players are mostly defined by their physical stature, and when something about them stands out, it usually becomes a point of emphasis for that player, like the fact that KD is skinny, or that Muggsy Bogues was shorter than my mom. Things like this, especially for players that we're about to see, really are the point of focus for all these guys, and because they're the best in these categories in the history of the league, it's what really sets them apart from all the others. And we can first start with the heaviest NBA player in the history of the game, which goes to Oliver Miller, who at one point in his career got up to win 300 175 pounds, which for some reason the Clutch Point website mentions is more weight than a panda bear, which seemed a little unnecessary. But Oliver just barely beats out 7-1 Shaq, who at one point got up to being about 370. The only difference was that Miller was only 6 foot 9, so he ended up getting pretty out of shape throughout his career, especially since it started out with him being about 270. And the struggle to keep up with his health and conditioning was part of what caused him to bounce around teams year after year, with him having played for 8 different teams in his 13 seasons in the league, while also playing overseas and even for the Harlem Globetrotters. Obviously, it was hard for him to play at the level he was expected to when he couldn't get up and down the floor like he was supposed to. And honestly, looking back, it is a little surprising that he was able to keep a job as long as he did in pro basketball. Looking at the tallest player to ever play in the league is a two-way tie between 7-7 George Mirasan and Manut Bowl. The only difference was Manut was skinnier than Kevin Durant and weighed 200 pounds, while George was right around where he should have been and weighed about 315. Enough about weight though, we saw a lot more guys with this height back in the day than we do now because of how the game was played, and a guy like Manut found himself very effective putting up 5 blocks a game in his rookie season. But no matter how good they were, Bull, Mirasan, Yao Ming, the Giants never lasted long due to their bodies not being able to keep up, with the two tallest the NBA has ever seen lasting 9 and 6 seasons respectively. And it's no surprise that someone that big just wasn't built to be durable for that long. Then when it comes to strength and the strongest NBA player of all time that we've ever seen, it comes down to two men. Due to all the stories out there, it's no doubt that Wilt Chamberlain was the strongest of all time, and there's plenty of stories from even guys like Arnold Schwarzenegger to back that up. But those are all just stories. Stories. The strongest we've ever gotten to see physically on the court was Shaq. And it's not backed up by any numbers in the weight room or any bench press personal best. It's backed up by the broken backboards, the way he was an immovable wall, and would bully guys down low. He made the biggest players in the NBA look like little kids trying to guard him, and would usually knock anyone right out of the way. Towards the end of his career, Shaq did have some issues with his weight and all, but never again will we see a guy that was 7 foot tall, over 300 pounds, and had athleticism and muscles the way Shaq did. As for the fastest NBA player of all time, that one's really hard to say because there's a lot of greats that are all pretty hard to measure just how fast they were. So we'll just give a shout out to the top three, then you can decide from there. Personally, I think it's easy to say that this one's between Prime Derrick Rose, Russell Westbrook, and De'Aaron Fox. There were very few people in the league on the same athletic level as Prime Derrick Rose. Not even his own body could keep up with himself. Not only did he have the speed of Westbrook, but he had a 40 inch vertical too, which is better than both Russ and De'Aaron's. And both of these men are hard to argue against, but even a guy like John Morant could be in this argument too, with how quick he is laterally up and down the court. So make sure to comment your pick for who fastest player in the NBA history is. As for the biggest hands we've ever seen, this one may surprise you, even with some of the Giants that I previously mentioned, a current day player holds this one, and it's not even Taco Fall, it's Boba Marjanovic, who stands at 7 foot 3 inches, and his hands are 10.75 inches long. So they're basically the size of a ruler, and slightly bigger than second place, Shaq's hands. Man, I just googled this dude's hands, and look at this, they look like they came off a real giant. Well, I guess he is a giant, but I'm talking something way bigger than 7 foot 3. He's holding this dude's neck, and they're huge. And that's a 7 foot tall dude. His fist is as big as this lady's head. Him holding this basketball makes it look like one of those little ones that come with those hoops you hang on the door. Honestly, I'm blown away and a little creeped out. When we get to wingspans, we circle back around to Manute Bowl. Rudy Gobert, Mo Bamba, and Taco Fall all set combine records when they were in it for largest wingspans ever recorded. But that's only because Manute never attended the draft combine. Instead, he has the record for largest in NBA history. And just to put it into perspective, Rudy's is 7 foot 8 and a half inches. Well, Manute's is 8 foot 6 inches long. So he has a wingspan span almost a foot longer than the best shot blocker in the game today. Which is why it's not surprising he had 5 blocks a game as a rookie. With shoe size, it's a different story. And this record is shared by two people, Shaq and Taco Fall, with a size 22 shoe. And why does Shaq got feet as big as Taco Fall is what I'm wondering. But either way, I wear a size 10, so we're saying Shaq's one foot is as big as both of mine combined. That's just weird to think about. Like, there's a lot of upsides to being that tall. You get to be in the NBA, you can reach the top shelf, but no one talks about the struggles of having gigantic feet for these dudes. Where are you really gonna find a size 22 shoe anywhere. Then for standing reach, the official record, which was measured at the combine, is held by Taco Fall for having a standing reach of 10 foot 2 inches. That means when he reaches up, his hand goes 2 inches over the rim, so he can basically dunk without jumping. You know, I get why Taco doesn't really work in the NBA today, but it's just hard to believe sometimes when you hear stats like this. Actually though, the unofficial record for standing reach is another one that belongs to Manu, because his was reportedly 10 foot 5 inches. It was just never made official. And I'm sure it's pretty safe to say no one will 
ever beat that record. But now we go back to a category more on the court. And when speaking of athleticism, there should be no doubt in anyone's mind that this is Wilt Chamberlain's spot. The dude is already by far the strongest NBA player ever, but then you can combine that with two things. The fact that he reportedly had a 48 inch vertical leap, the same as Michael Jordan, and ran a 4-6 40 yard dash, which was the same as LeBron James. Oh, and he did this all at 7-1, 280 pounds. I'm telling you, this dude was a freak of nature. He ran track and competed in the high jump in college and dominated both. I know a lot of these stats and stories about Wilt are hard to believe, but I think there's just way too many legendary stories out there about him from actual people for them to all be fake. As for athleticism, we actually really got to see on the court. I think this spot has to be shared by MJ and LeBron. Jordan had unreal body control, hang time of a fighter jet, and the highest NBA vertical of all time, while LeBron has the durability and athleticism for his size that has been unmatched. On the other side of things, we look at the slowest player in NBA history, and again, we kind of just have to base this off of opinion, but we do have some contenders. I mean, if we're talking current day players, we gotta give it to Kyle Anderson, who single-handedly turned a fast break into a slow break whenever he runs one. The dude almost comes to a complete stop when he's taking his final two steps before shooting, and it would be a cool, innovative move if he was doing this on purpose in order to throw off opposing team's timings so they couldn't block his shot, but it's not even on purpose. He just really is that slow. Another dude, if we're talking all time, was Dirk Nowitzki in his later years. It was almost painful to watch him look like he was almost limping up and down the court every time, and a fast break? Forget about it. It wasn't even an option when he was on the court. And I mean, there's a ton of other options here. Brooke Lopez is pretty slow. Any of the NBA Giants had a chance for this one. Kendrick Perkins, Roy Hibbert, they all ran like snails. As I mentioned earlier, the highest ever vertical leap goes to Michael Jordan and Wilt Chamberlain, if you want to believe it's true. I mean, MJ used to float in the air and would flat out outlast guys in the air. He would jump and another guy would jump. The other guy would start coming down and Jordan would still be in the air. While people said that Wilt Chamberlain used to be able to grab quarters off the top of the backboard. Now, the shortest ever NBA player is Muggsy Bogues, who stood five foot three inches tall, which is the height of your average woman. I mean, just by normal male standards, 5'3 is pretty short. Shout out to all 5'3 dudes out there. But by NBA standards, that height's almost microscopic. And not only did Muggsy just make the NBA at that height, he had a near 15 year career and averaged double digits for three seasons. And him actually surviving in the NBA for that long is one of the most impressive just human stats in NBA history. And with that, you might have expected him to also hold the spot for the lightest NBA player of all time, but that actually goes to Spud Webb, who weighed 133 pounds, which was three pounds less than Muggsy. And Spud stands at five foot seven, but 133 is tiny too. But weighing that little played a huge part in what allowed Webb to have a 46 inch vertical and win a dunk contest of his own as by far the smallest dude to ever win one. We don't really see guys that short in the NBA anymore. I mean, Isaiah Thomas is the shortest in recent memory and he hasn't stuck around. I don't know that we'll ever see anyone under 5'9 or even under 150 pounds compete in the league again, which makes what these guys did all the more impressive. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm out.